This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, everyone, and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We've got a great show today on Wednesday. We've got Shannon Tanganon, Tanganon I always get that wrong, who's got some uh, great uh, good news from uh, Hawaii Electric with us. And we've got Chris Johnson from uh, Blue Planet Energy, who's going to be talking to us about uh, PV and batteries, the perfect marriage. So we'll start off with Shannon, and she's going to give us some good news. So Hi, Shannon, Dennis. what's your good news? Well, the good news is we've added a lot of rooftop solar. So private rooftop solar is growing. Um, last year we added about um, nearly 4,000 systems. Wow, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah, it's great news. And we're leading the country, really. Um, you know, maybe not as quickly as others would like, but we're leading the country. We have 18% um, of all residential customers have um, rooftop solar. Okay. Yeah. So what's the uh, prognosis for going forward? Do you see this trend continuing? Uh, and, and, and why, and do you have any insight on why, why we've seen this increase? Well, most definitely. I think people are, you know, you know, for one, they want to, they want to save money on their electricity bill. Right. Also, you know, you want to, you know, generate clean energy. Right. So we definitely support that. Our programs are trying our hardest to, to get everything online and keep it Every, the momentum going okay. so you know as far as our place in the we lead the, the nation right. in private rooftop solar installations and the next um, state behind us is Connecticut so we're at about 18 really? percent Connecticut is at 6.8 percent so, I'm surprised with Connecticut you yeah. think it would be some place like in Arizona yeah. or something where they have lots of Sun and desert and everything like California's that California's next yeah. At 5.9% right. in Arizona. So, Very good. Yeah, Connecticut yeah. was surprising. Do you have any insight on the commercial side? Um, I know that ECO announced like seven big, was it seven big projects on the, com at the commercial or yeah, at scale? Yeah, the grid scale level. Yeah. I mean, we're announcing, yeah, about seven. It's solar plus storage. Um, right. It's before the PUC, so the applications are in. So right. we're just waiting to see whether they'll be approved. Right. We're also in the process of putting out another RFP. That'll be soon, and then we're right. hoping to add more uh, different types of clean energy. You right. know, whether it be um, wind. You know, it, it's just we want to op broaden the portfolio. Yeah, you know, wind's kind of tough. I think we're. Somebody was telling me that we've kind of down to one or two good wind sites, and that's pretty well it for Oahu. Main thing is like. Uh, the uh, viewscape. I mean, people, you know, yeah. I happen to love wind turbines and I think they're beautiful, but uh -huh. that's just me. You know, yeah. lots of people uh, worry or concerned about it. So, yeah, it's tough. I mean, you have, it's always, you know, you want clean energy. We have to get to 100%. So, we need different ways to get there. We can't just uh, depend on one type of technology. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, solar is, uh, the price continues to fall. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was talking to a guy today and I was really surprised at the uh, power purchase agreement rate. Uh, and I think yeah. even uh, Peter Rosick, when he was on here, was talking about it. It's like, you know, down in the, you know, around the 10 cent level. I mean, yeah. I don't know exactly yeah. what Eight it is. Yeah, 8 cents, 10 yeah. cents. Yeah, I mean, it's wonderful that we're getting to that price point. Right. But, you know, just, you know, whether it be a few years ago, that wasn't the case. So right. if we had put all our eggs in that basket, we right. wouldn't see the savings we are today. Yeah. So we need to keep our options open for new technologies, breakthrough technologies. Um, we, we can't just put everything in one basket. So as a hydrogen nut, I've got to get my little oh, hydrogen wow. plug in here. I mean, 10 cent and below yeah. uh, PV cost or electricity, that's great for us. Yes. Because it makes uh, hydrogen very viable with mm -hmm. uh, competing against uh, fossil fuels. So let's keep that up. Yeah. Okay. We will. Thanks. So do you have anything else before we cut to a break? or? No, that, I think that's about that, it. That's I think we're just, it. you know, wanting to spread the good, the good news. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's great news. So anyway, thank you very much. Right. Thank you. And we're going to cut to a break now and tee up for uh, Chris Johnson of uh, Blue Planet Energy. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, 
so caught up in the confusion Nothing is making sense For me and you Maybe we can find a way There's got to be solution How to make a brighter day What do we do? We've got to give a little love Have a little hope Make this world a little better Make it a better Try a little more Harder than before Aloha! I'm Tim Apicella. I'm here with Cynthia Sinclair. And this is Trump Week. It's going to appear every Friday at 11 a.m. Between Jay Fidel, Cynthia, and myself, we talk about Trump, the activities, and the news stories for that week as it pertains to the Trump administration. We hope you tune in and watch the fun. Aloha. See you then. Aloha and welcome back after our short break. I, I'm pleased to have uh, Chris Johnson who uh, rose to the occasion. I contacted him yesterday afternoon and Blue Planet Energy, a can-do attitude. They came right, uh, they responded right away. And uh, so I welcome you, uh, Chris. Uh, he's the Chief Operating Officer of Blue Planet Energy. We're going to talk about uh, PV, the marriage between PV and batteries and all the good work that uh, Blue Planet Energy is doing, not only in Hawaii, but in other places around the world, uh, like uh, Puerto Rico. So uh, Chris, uh, how long have you been with uh, Blue Planet Energy, and who's the founder? What's the kind of the core background of the company? Sure, uh, and thanks for having me, Mitch. Great to be here. So Blue Planet Energy has been around for just over three years, and we are uh, based here in Oahu. And uh, Hank Rogers is a founder of Blue Planet Energy, as well as another uh, a number of other uh, complementary organizations including Blue Planet Foundation which has been around now for over 10 years working on the policy front and we're the commercialization arm of the solutions that lead us to uh, getting off of carbon-based fuels and so uh, part of what's happened there is that um, uh, with the explosive growth of solar in Hawaii uh, and the challenges to the grid that came with that um, uh, the utility put some brakes on putting more solar on the on the grid and so uh, our founder Hank realized, Hank Rogers realized that uh, energy storage was a key to unlocking more renewable penetration on the grid. And so that's kind of how we, he set off on a journey to find the best and, and make the best batteries possible, which then ended up generating our company to, to um, develop and bring those to market. Okay, so we have some slides to uh, help this conversation along and, and to make it a little bit easier for uh, Chris to be able to describe uh, what they do and uh, some of their equipment. So can we have that first slide up, please? Sure, and we'd go. love for you to see our product as we there get through here. So a beautiful splash screen there. As always, a Blue Planet uh, has really uh, captured the Blue Planet logo. They've got Blue Planet on a lot of other things, which is great to see. So um, why don't you uh, tell us, uh, you know, explain what you do. Sure, thanks. What's your value proposition? Absolutely. So energy storage is a, is a fairly new uh, sector, and we have um, we decided to bet really hard on safety. So we have the highest quality product out there that really puts safety uh, at, in the forefront. And so that's why we say we have the most powerful, reliable, and safest energy storage system at the lowest cost of ownership. And so our system lasts longer, it's more reliable, it delivers more power, and it, it, the warranty is longer. So it's, it's something that you can rely on, and that's um, uh, what we think customers are looking for. You don't want to have to worry about uh, a fire erupting in something that you're relying on for your energy system. Right. And Hank has uh, put his money where his mouth is, and uh, he's uh, off-grid on uh, two systems. First of all, his ranch at Pu'uwawa on the Big Island. Totally off-grid. He even has the like, power lines taken out, and he's got a battery storage backup using the same technology. And also his house here on Oahu, he's totally off-grid there as well. Yep. So uh, great, uh, you know, he's you know, proving the technology himself before he goes to the market. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's been over five years of relying on those systems, cycling every day. Yeah. You know, when you're off-grid, the batteries are core. You really need to have that uh, reliability so that the, the solar charges them up during the day and then the sun goes down and that's what you're living off of right. is those batteries. Well, let's uh, pull up the next slide. And you can talk a little bit about your product now. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, so this is the Blue Ion 2.0. This is our second generation product. So Hank, Hank's uh, house and the ranch is actually running off of our first generation product. Uh, we were able to actually bring the cost down 30% with this, uh, as well as make the installation easier and faster for our installer partners. So you can see here we highlight some of the things like our 15-year performance warranty. 
Uh, most batteries are only, uh, lithium ion batteries are only providing a 10 year warranty. Um, really? It, yeah. That's it, significant. It's significant it, it, indeed. And, and, and lead acid, which is a lot of the technology that we're replacing, uh, sort of a, a long, uh, you know, been around a lot longer, is even less than that. Right. Um, so this is a very modular, scalable uh, system. So we, right. you know, you can get one of these or you can put many of them together to build as, as large of a system as you want. It's been through all the testing and certifications for safety. Um, and we've, you know, we've been deploying these now for um, about a year, a little over a year and a half. Yeah. Um, and it's so you bring out the point about cool operation. So I've been up to the ranch and, and seen the, the big uh, uh, modules they have up there. And by cool operation, it means you can rapidly charge the battery and discharge it. And you put your hand on it. Like, I think it only goes up like about two degrees. So you don't need a bunch of air conditioning and all that kind of stuff. And uh, speaking of cool, I got to say, the packaging is really cool. You, know, you walk in there and you look <laughs> at this thing and it's like a wow. It's like this blue glow. You can see a little bit of on the door there, but this is very cool packaging. So it looks, not only is it functional and does all the things you think, but it really looks good in your house. I mean, you could take your neighbors to, it's almost like going to our art gallery and say, wow, look at that. Is that ever nice? You know? Thanks, Mitch. I appreciate hearing that. It's part of uh, uh, Hank's signature on, on the company is to know that uh, we need, you know, we strive to be the coolest company and we know that that's got to be reflected in our products as well. Right. So let's have the next slide. So this talks a little bit about the system. So why don't you walk us through it? I think uh, you have to sure. Kind of, uh, so we uh, we kind of go from the, the the smallest component up to the whole system itself here. So we we start that quality and that safety at the cells themselves. So uh, you can see here on the left uh, um, these cells. So what Mitch was mentioning about the cool um, the the stable here means thermally stable. So sometimes you'll hear about those uh, the hoverboards or the Samsung notes that would catch on fire. That's from a, th a phenomenon called thermal runaway. So as you operate them, the temperature goes up, and at some point, different chemistries will not be able to stop getting hot, and they'll, they'll have this thermal runaway problem, catch on fire, and burn themselves. So right. this chemistry, uh, you can see the, the LIFEPO abbreviation here, a lithium ferrous phosphate, lithium iron phosphate, does not have the risk of fire. Right. So those cells are then uh, built into modules. Um, so each module has its own battery management system, the BMS. Um, this is a very robust construction. Sometimes we see out there in the industry, these are pretty hokey and put together with some substandard parts. This thing is very robust. Uh, it has physical safety features built in here. And then those are the building blocks of the system itself. So we build uh, out um, really kind of uh, some, uh, you know, the balance of systems around those modules. So one of the key ones that we build is this battery management unit. That's kind of like the safety and brains for that whole system. And that, it, that adds another layer of software and hardware safety. Uh, then we have monitoring software here to make it a delightful experience for the user. And we're really making sure that this product gets to market in a way that is useful and meaningful and accessible. Right. OK, next slide, please. So here's just a glimpse of our uh, monitoring software. Again, we bring this down to you know, an iPhone app. Uh, the idea here is to make it as easy as possible for, for uh, the customer to know what's going on. So they can see the state of the charge, they can see how long their battery is going to last, and whether it's uh, at, at the rate they're using it at, and whether it's charging or discharging. Also counts the cycle life on here, so you can kind of brag about how, many, how much you're using your battery right. as you go through this. Because, uh, you know, again, our, our, our battery warranty is for 8,000 cycles. Which, uh, what's that in years? Like, it sounds uh, like a lot. It, yeah, we, we really want people to use this as much as possible. Some of our competitors, they don't want you cycling it every day. We'd, yeah. we'd love to see it cycled multiple times a day because right. the battery can handle that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this battery management system, all these things, uh, I mean, we keep the, the uh, cells leveled because I think one of the things that generates heat is when you have a mismatch between the uh, voltage of your two cells, and that's part of your quality control of the, of the people that actually built the batteries in the first place. Exactly. And then, and then when you put it all together in the system, that's really, really important. I mean, it's nothing like heat to kill a battery and shorten its life. So... It, it, it kills all batteries, no matter what their chemistry are, no matter what the, yeah, that, exactly. that'll, that'll degrade them quick. Yeah, yeah. So next slide, please. Now we can talk about money. Now we can talk about money, sure. So uh, on this slide, we try and compare two things. One is um, kind of the older um, technologies that we're seeing a lot of replacements for, lead acid technology. So again, batteries and, and, and putting the batteries with solar is nothing new. This has been going on for over 40 years, but lead acid is kind of the, the, the technology with the, the, the longest track record. Um, it tends to be cheap up front, but it doesn't last very long. So with a long lifetime like our system has, you'll end up replacing that lead acid system three, four, five right. times. 
And while it's cheaper up front to buy that, if you look at that cost over the whole lifetime, it will be up to three and a half times more expensive. And then on the right here, we reflect um, a, um, pretty comparable, uh, like an average lithium ion system that's out there. And again, um, while it may be a little bit cheaper up front, you're going to need to replace that before you need to replace our system. Right. So our warranty being 50% longer um, and providing more power and flexibility on the installation means that in many cases we actually come out being cheaper. So yeah, it's really important to look at the total life cycle cost. I mean, people just you know, key on the, uh, the acquisition cost. And uh, in fact, uh, like you said, you know, the ongoing maintenance, is particularly lead acid batteries, is pretty significant. And uh, you can only like discharge them about to 30% of their charge, or I mean, discharge them 30%. So you still have like 60, 70 or 60% left in there. Yeah. If you go below that, then you seriously degrade the life, the overall life of the battery. Whereas your battery can go right down to 0%. You can discharge that from 100% down to 0% without any de degradation at all. Right. Yeah. 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 With the lead acid and other batteries, it's like having a glass that's half full. You can only, you know. But that's as far down as you can go. Yeah. If it's half full, you need to fill it back up yeah. before you can drink anymore. And if you get tempted to go further down in that glass, then you're going to really pay you, for you've it. You've ruined your investment, yeah. basically. Exactly. Yeah. And, that, and that's what happens. People will, um, you know, and, and with the lead acid especially, it's tricky to maintain. They're, they're quite complex. And if you get it wrong, you're, you're looking for a new battery. Yeah. We, get, we get calls from around the islands here of people who and we got one, I think, the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Somebody said, my battery just died. I'm running on a generator. How soon can you get one here? Right. Yeah, because you have to keep them watered, you know, watered and fed, just like, a, you know, <laughs> just like your pets. And if they don't get watered and fed, they die. So, yeah. Next slide, please. Great. So, tell us about your market and where your customers are located. Great. Yeah, so, um, you know, when we started out, we thought we were going to be, uh, this battery would be mostly used in uh, residential settings. But what we found is we actually are getting significant um, attraction in the commercial settings as well. So about 40% of our customers on the commercial side and 60% uh, on the residential side. We started here in Hawaii, um, have many uh, uh, installations on the island of Hawaii uh, and, uh, and several other islands. Um, but set from here, we've really expanded out. We now have installations in over 20 states. Um, and then Puerto Rico has really been our, our fastest growing market. Um, so, uh, and then also we have uh, uh, installations in Mexico and Canada. And then batteries are very flexible in how you use them. And so we, we, you know, we have on here what we also do in these use cases. Mm -hmm. So again, we started with off-grid, which is a mature energy storage market where people get the value of batteries and that longevity. But now we've also seen a lot moving in resilience. So there's a, a picture here uh, uh, with the yellow, uh, the yellow boxes, uh, those inverters there, is uh, actually a bank in Puerto Rico. They don't <laughs> even have solar on this. This is to back up their ATMs and servers to keep right. uh, business continuity going on there. Oh, very good. So uh, do we have a slide on Puerto Rico? Or is that it? I think this is so it. So tell us a little bit more about Puerto Rico, because of course that was a disaster, and you guys went into a dis what was essentially a disaster area. How did, how did that work? I mean, how were you able to get in there and get your product in front of people? Sure. So uh, it took a lot of coordinating, a lot of outreach. So we, we actually go through certified installers um, of our product. So we had an installer on the island already who knew our product and was familiar with it, had taken training from us before. And so we, we talked with him basically every day for months really? to figure out, because we're not, we're not a disaster response organization, right? Yeah. But, you know, there's a relief effort that needs to happen first. And once we moved into the reconstruction period is really where we... Um, you know, uh, started our active presence there. And, you know, but, but our, the people on the ground were dealing with uh, 40 days without communications, mm -hmm. 60 days plus without electricity. Most of the time they were trying to figure out how to make their own lives work. And so it was very hard for them to give us any, you know, uh, deep information uh, so we could take action. So literally we had a partner who uh, was going to do some water pumping projects in, for villages that didn't have electricity where they needed water. Um, and, uh, and so we threw a bunch of batteries on a plane and uh, Greg and Kyle flew down to Puerto Rico and spent uh, two months on the ground yeah. going around, working with folks. Uh, we trained about 100 installers at that time because, uh, you know, the, the, the PV market is, you know, came out of this grid tied. Everything's, you know, based on how you, 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 you monetize it re relative to, to selling energy back to the grid with net energy metering. Yeah. And uh, so when you do that, you usually don't use batteries in the sort of traditional way. Right. And so most of the installers had no experience with batteries. So, so Kyle, who, who leads a lot of our technical training, 
like literally trained 100 people. And a lot of it was the basics of what does it mean to use a battery. Mm -hmm. And then into some of the t particularities of our, of our um, system and how to install it. And that led to, um, really, we're working across, I'd say, three use cases there. Um, the first started with these water pumping systems, so really uh, looking at critical infrastructure. Um, so in these remote villages, the utility decided not to rebuild the grid after right. Hurricane Maria. It was too yeah. expensive, not enough customers. Right. And so these villages were not on the, the water grid either. And so they, now they're left without water. You only survive, you know, like three or four or five days without water. Yeah, and there's lots of illness, lots of people leaving these areas. And yeah. so uh, um, uh, we went in with a nonprofit that had a very integrated approach um, to creating a self-sustaining uh, system there. And so we're very blessed to work with Water Mission on that. And they um, have installed several of our systems around the island. So that was kind of like a remote power setting. Right. Uh, we also have people who now they use the grid as backup. Right? They're basically self-sufficient. They could be off-grid, but they have that grid connection there just in case inclement weather for a number of days. Sure. You want that sense of security. Um, so instead of batteries as backup, it's grid as backup. Right. And that's a, also um, uh, working with uh, organizations there to build in resilience. Right. Um, so a lot of the community shelters there uh, that were set up in each village didn't have backup power. Wow. And so people showed up and there's water and there's food and there's no electricity, yeah. um, but there's also no pumps, so the water supplies don't last very long. And it was, it was kind of a disaster. And so now they're building in self-sufficiency for uh, some of those community centers as well. So do you think that the uh, market there, the people, the population, the, the, the uh, decision makers, uh, do they uh, have a high opinion of uh, the Blue Planet offering, or Blue Planet Energy offering? I would think they would. Uh, we've, we've done our best to show just the quality of our product and the quality of our support. We're getting lots of great feedback there. And, yeah. um, you know, we, we say, vamos con blue. Let's go with blue. They call, there they call us blue. Baterias blue. <laughs> great. And uh, so, yeah, it's been exciting to work with a lot of amazing partners on the ground there yeah. um, and, and really see that market take off. So what about working with uh, some of the relief organizations like FEMA and things like that? I mean, did, did that give you some uh, entry into those markets as well? We've been building those relationships since being there. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of it, um, people took notice of the, the, the critical infrastructure work that we were doing yeah. and, and saw how that may be applied in their situations as well. So, um, so yeah, we've been build, um, having people on the ground there uh, as well is, is critical. Like we really wanted to make sure we had a, a, a relevant local presence that we didn't just sort of parachute in with something from the outside, drop them off, leave, and, and, right. but really built a self-sustaining uh, community there, uh, business ecosystem, yeah. as well as the, the technical knowledge um, and, and the adoption base. So there must be lots of folks, uh, business uh, people, entrepreneurs in Puerto Rico that maybe want to become, uh, you know, sellers for you, part of the Blue Planet family, yes? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. We, um, we, do, we partner with uh, the different inverter companies there to do trainings, yeah. um, and we've been building up that network there, and, uh, and, and one of our installers actually is uh, one who trains anybody who wants to be a certified solar installer on the island. Very good. So yeah, it's a great network awesome. there. Um, and a lot of passionate people working on this. Okay, good, well done. Are we uh, approaching a break? I'm not sure if I heard something back there, no? Uh, don't need to take a break, let's just blast right through. So let's pull up the next slide. I think that might be it. Oh, is that all the slides? Yeah. Okay, so what other uh, good news or what other areas are you guys uh, finding uh, to be, um, you know, attracting, attracted to this type mm -hmm. of technology? So really this, this re idea of resilience. Um, and, and this is where we've, we've played a little bit back and forth on the lessons learned here in Hawaii um, and taking that to Puerto Rico because Puerto Rico is looking for a model. Mm -hmm. They say, who can we learn from? And they see the explosive growth of, of renewables here and they wanted to learn from that. So we've taken some lessons there to Puerto Rico. Um, but now Puerto Rico, in a way, is kind of leapfrogged Hawaii because they've gone beyond just uh, throwing up solar, but also to build in solar and storage. Right. And so, uh, you know, this ability to, and a lot of people don't realize, and, and I think here it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a big wake-up call when we have a big storm that takes out some of the, the grid, which we're just as vulnerable to here in Hawaii as we are in Puerto Rico, is um, that most of that solar is not going to work when the grid goes down. So we had a really close call back in, was, was it September or October when yep. uh, we had two hurricanes? By, I mean, imagine yeah. that one just like took a 90 degree turn just before it was going to schmuck us. Yep. Really, really good stuff. Yeah. I mean, like, thank God, literally. Yes. On that one. Yes, that was, it was scary. And, and just, you know, so, so um, tr having these conversations to get people to have a plan mm -hmm. before there's a disaster 
So, um, you know, and in a way, it's the need to invest in climate change adaptation. Right. Storms are getting bigger. We're going to have more storms. We need to be ready for them. Okay, so, you know, uh, we're hosted by uh, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, so I'm going to focus a little bit on policy. So what kind of barriers uh, or policy barriers do you see here in Hawaii, and kind of what would your recommendation, what kind of new uh, policies should we be thinking, uh, you know, to get in place to make it easier for, for you to put in this resilience so that we're not just, like, you know, wasting time waiting for, you know, the whole bureaucratic chain to react? What, what's... What's, sure. what's top of the pops? What do great. we need to do better? Well, we're making great progress on the microgrid uh, policy. So the policy is in place. Now we need to actually formulate the regulations so yeah. that we know what it means. Create a level playing field and some clarity there. Um, you know, obviously, we would love to see uh, incentives for adapting, adaptation uh, or adoption of uh, batteries. So some kind of uh, you know, property tax incentive or a, you know, some kind of tax incentive. Because solar got a lot of incentives there for many years, which, which, which fueled uh, the, the, the rate of adoption. Yeah. And then, you know, batteries are still really early, and that's one reason they're, they're so expensive, is we haven't reached a lot of the economies of scale. And we need to get more of this out there. Right. And so some kind of incentive to get that locally would be, would be great. Uh, and I think uh, uh, removing barriers to interconnection agreements, okay. um, you know, is always one that uh, uh, is, you know, I thought we were easier. getting better at that. I mean, you know, are we, or is it like still too slow? I mean, I mean, you're in business, so everything has to be speed of light. But <laughs> is uh, is it reasonable, or we just still have some work to do there? Uh, I th I think the you know, and this is not just here, but in, in many locations, utilities are still trying to figure out how to play with the batteries. Right. They would prefer to own them. Yeah. And if they're not going to own them, then what's this going to do to my business? Right. And and unfortunately, batteries are way better better for the utilities than, uh, but they're resistant because they they lost so much revenue over the the solar adoption. Right. And so I feel like they're actually resisting the adoption that we could be having because they don't really know how to adopt their business model fast enough. Yeah. So do you have any? I, I guess uh, the new legislations have you know have just come out in the last day or so. So kind of, uh, you know, it's a long read, it's a long list, like there's over a thousand uh, Senate bills and I think there's about 750 House bills. Got to work our way through those and see, you know, what's good and what's bad. So, so you guys should uh, look through that and uh, let us know wh what uh, you support and what you think is a bad idea so maybe we can, you know, have some kind of, uh, you know, help, help along and, and, and help get the right policies in place to support this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, sure. We will. We will do our best. Uh, I would, you know, I would also recommend you uh, invite in our cousin uh, Blue Planet Foundation, <laughs> since that's their world is working on the policy. Yeah, world. sure. Yeah, you they know. do a really good job at it. I love their report card that they produce every year. And Jeff Michelini does a great job and yes, looking at things in a slightly different, innovative, interesting way that uh, captures people's uh, attention. And yeah. uh, he puts on things like the Blue Line. It's a really good program, and I uh, really thank Hank uh, Rogers for like funding funding this, um, and uh, you know supporting all of this. I mean, Hank's vision is the vision of looking out his office window and seeing no oil tankers. <laughs> That's what he told me a long back, long long time ago. So yeah. Well, I think we're uh, coming to the end now. Um, is there anything that I missed or that you want to talk about that we haven't talked about? Great question. Ah, um, you know, I think we covered a lot of great ground here today, and I think especially this evolution from um, renewable energy as a sort of profit center and return on investment to really where we're looking at resilience and ensuring continuity of business and well-being in communities right. is a conversation that we're, we're supporting, and so I'm glad we were able to visit that. And then, uh, and really how energy storage can unlock more renewable energy and thus decreasing yeah. our carbon footprint. Yeah. So yeah, I think um, I'd love to come back when we've got some more uh, of our uh, success stories out there to share with you and talk about and, uh, and hopefully con continue to promote that in Hawaii because I think as people see it, they will believe it more, especially as we get that track record. Maybe you could come back here with some uh, case studies of people that uh, you know, installed it, uh, you know, what the, the whole deal was up front, what it took them, how long it took them to get it in place, and then what the results were. like. Supposedly, how happy are they with this system? Sure. You know, so you can brag about it. Can we, can we take you on a field trip? I mean, we've got, we've got hundreds here. Yeah, you know? yeah, we've yeah. Got, you know, take them around the islands. Um, yeah, we've been getting some great feedback, and uh, um, we, we actually do feature our 
uh, our customers because they love to tell that story and how right. excited they are about it, we and, do that. as well as the installers. Yeah, Jay Fidel, who uh, fronts uh, ThinkTech, is always uh, you know wants to go out in the field and take stories. Okay. So. And I'd like to go up to the blue plant up at Puguawa. Maybe we could highlight some of the stuff they're doing with your batteries, you know, with this kind of battery, because it's a pretty impressive show they have up there. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, thanks a lot, Chris. Thank you, Mitch. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in, and we'll be back next Wednesday at Hawaii, the state of clean energy.